morning again. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. There we are, some enthusiasm there on this uh, gloomy, storm-ridden day, but uh, that's all good because we're talking about a storm in the gospel, <laughs> and you're all here and inside and safe. Uh, my name is Bill Mouse, and I'm here uh, leading worship again uh, this Sunday while Terry is uh, enjoying some time across the, the pond, as it were. Uh, we'll begin our, our service, Allison, uh, if we can have the next slide here, yep, come on up, and Allison and the kids uh, will come on up to the front, and everyone else can have a seat here. <coughs> morning, everyone. Oh, okay. Well, better. Good morning, everyone. How is everyone today? Good, Good quiet, calm, relaxed. I like it. Um, so today is our last day of Sunday school for the school year. We have a big party on Friday night. Did you hear that last week Sunday school voted that the cotton candy machine should come? Yeah, so we have cotton candy on Friday. Um, big carnival, everyone is welcome. Come on and uh, join us for that. Um, but I thought for today's children's talk we would do something a little bit different. Um, and I made a slideshow of just uh, some of the things we have done this year. So I thought we would enjoy that. Sound like a good idea? See if you guys can find yourselves in the pictures. All right, here we go. Hit it, Cam.
It was so much fun going through all of those pictures. There were so many I couldn't include, um, but I do want to say thank you to everyone who has supported the kids, the families, um, the younger families. Oops, we're going again. <laughs> um, this year, it has been absolutely amazing. Uh, thank you from the bottom of my heart, without the volunteers, um, without those extras, without making crosses for the kids, barbecuing for our events, um, jumping in when things are crazy, or taking those pictures because I am too busy with the kids so that we actually do have pictures to go back and look on. Um, I just want to say thank you so much. It's been uh, a great year, and I'm looking forward to seeing you Friday and then uh, next September, and we'll start a whole new photo stream. Thank you. On your way and blessings, Allison. We are blessed by your leadership and God is good throughout all those photos and all the activities. It's wonderful to see. Would you stand for our territorial acknowledgement as our worship uh, continues? On Friday, we observe National Indigenous Day of Prayer and I invite your prayers for all the Indigenous peoples of Turtle Island and for our ongoing work of truth and reconciliation. We acknowledge that the land on which we gather is the traditional territory of the Anishinaabe and the Haudenosaunee peoples. We give, we give thanks, thanks for the stewardship, stewardship culture, culture, and heritage of First Nations, Inuit, and Métis, and, and we, we seek, seek to honour our treaty commitments. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hidden. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. defender storms rage about us and cause us to be afraid rescue your people from despair Dis deliver your children from fear and preserve us all from unbelief through your son Jesus Christ our Lord who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit one God now and forever amen be seated as we listen for God's word <coughs> A reading from the first book of Samuel. <clears throat> now the Philistines gathered their armies for battle, and there came out from the camp of the Philistines a champion 
named Goliath of Gath, whose height was six cubits in a span. He had a helmet of bronze on his head, and he was armed with a coat of mail. The weight of the coat was 5,000 shekels of bronze. He had greaves of bronze on his legs and a javelin of bronze slung between his shoulders. The shaft of his spear was like a weaver's beam, and his spear's head weighed 600 shekels of iron, and his shield-bearer went before him. He stood and shouted to the ranks of Israel, Why have you come to, out to draw up for a battle? Am I not a Philistine, and are you not servants of Saul? Choose a man for yourself, and let him come down to me. If he is able to fight with me and kill me, then we will be your servants. But if I prevail against him and kill him, then you shall be our servants and serve us. And the Philistine said, Today I defy the ranks of Israel. Give me a man that we may fight together. When Saul and Israel heard these words of the Philistine, they were dismayed and greatly afraid. Now Saul and they and all the men of Israel were in the valley of Elah, fighting with the Philistines. David rose early in the morning, left the sheep with the keeper, took provisions, and went as Jesse had commanded him. He came to the encampment as the army was going forth to the battle line, shouting the war cry. Israel and the Philistines drew up for battle, army against army. David left the things in charge of the keeper of his baggage, ran to the ranks, and went and greeted his brothers. As he talked with them, the champion, the Philistines of Gath, Goliath by name, came up out of the ranks of the Philistines and spoke the same words as before. And David heard him. David said to Saul, Let no one's heart fail because of him. Your servant will go and fight with the Philistine. Saul said to David, You are not able to go against this Philistine to fight with him, for you are just a boy, and he has been a warrior from his youth. But David said to Saul, Your servant used to keep sheep for his father, and whenever a lion or a bear came, and took a lamb from the flock, I went down after it and struck it down, rescuing the lamb from its mouth. And if it turned against me, I would catch it by the jaw and strike it down and kill it. Your servant has killed both lions and bears, and this uncircumcised Philistine shall be like one of them, since he has defied the armies of the living God. David said, The Lord, who saved me from the paw of the lion, and from the paw of the bear will save me from the hand of this Philistine. So Saul said to David, Go, and may the Lord be with you. Saul clothed David with his armor and put a bronze helmet on his head and clothed him with a coat of mail. David strapped Saul's sore over the armor, and he tried in vain to walk, <clears throat> for he was not used to them. Then David said to Saul, I cannot walk with these, for I am not used to them. So David removed them. Then he took his staff in his hand and chose five smooth stones from the wadi and put them in his shepherd's bag in the pouch. His sling was in his hand, and he drew near the Philistine. The Philistine came on and drew near to David with his shield-bearer in front of him. When the Philistine looked and saw David, he disdained him for he was only a youth, ruddy and handsome in appearance. The Philistine said to David, Am I a dog that you come to me with sticks? And the Philistine cursed David by his dogs. The Philistine said to David, Come to me and I will give your flesh to the birds of the air and to the wild animals of the field. But David said to the Philistine, You come to me with sword and spear and javelin. But I come to you in the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of the armies of Israel, whom you have defied. This very day the Lord will deliver you into my hand, and I will strike you down and cut off your head. And I will give the dead bodies to the Philistine army this very day, to the birds of the air and to the wild animals of the earth, so that all the earth may know that there is a God in Israel, and that, and that all this assembly may know what the guard does not save by the sword and spear, for the battle is the Lord's, and he will give you into our hand. 
When the Philistine drew near to meet David, David ran quickly toward the battle line to meet the Philistine. David put his hand in his bag, took out a stone, slung it, and struck the Philistine on his forehead. The stone sank into his forehead, and he fell face down on the ground. The word of the Lord. A reading from the second letter of Paul to the Corinthians. As we work together with Christ, we urge you also not to accept the grace of God in vain. For he says, at an acceptable time, I have listened to you. And on a day of salvation, I have helped you. See, now it is acceptable time. See, now is the day of salvation. We are putting no obstacle in anyone's way so that no fault may be found with our ministry. But as servants of God, we have commended ourselves in every way, through great endurance, in afflictions, hardships, calamities, beatings, imprisonments, riots, labors, sleepless nights, hunger, by purity, knowledge, patience, kindness, holiness of spirit, genuine love, truthful speak, speech, and the power of God, with the weapons of righteousness for the right hand and for the left in honor and dishonor, in ill repute and good repute. We are treated as impostors and yet are true, as unknown and yet are well known, as dying and see. We are alive, as punished and yet not killed, as sorrowful, yet always rejoicing, as poor, making many rich, as having nothing and yet possessing everything. We have spoken frankly to you, Corinthians. Our heart is wide open to you. There is no restriction in the affections, but only in yours. In return, I speak as to children, open wide your hearts also. The word of the Lord.
Our gradual hymn is hymn 560, God Whose Almighty Word. be with you. And also with you. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. On that day, when evening had come, Jesus said to his disciples, let us go across to the other side. And leaving the crowd behind, they took with them in their boat, just as he was. Other boats were with him. A great windstorm arose, and the waves beat into the boat so that the boat was already swamped. But he was in the stern, asleep on the cushion. And they woke him up and said to him, Teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? He woke up and rebuked the wind and said to the sea, Peace, be still. Then the wind ceased and there was a dead calm. He said to them, Why are you afraid? Have you still no faith? And they were filled with great awe and said to one another, Who then is this, that even the wind and the sea obey him? The Gospel of Christ. Praise Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Christ. God's word be spoken and heard and lived. Amen. Most of us have a soft spot for the underdog. It's perhaps why the story of David and Goliath has become such a classic, such a widely known and epic tale that has spanned across the generations. Because, you see, David, by all means of accounting, ought not to have triumphed over the giant of a warrior known as Goliath. And yet he did. And with his victory came a new hope for an entire nation, a sense that God was on the side of the long-suffering people of Israel, that a new day was dawning, one that would see Israel's fortunes restored, finally. It was all because of this underdog, this child who had no military training, who couldn't even bear his armor, and who really had no business being on the front lines and yet found himself there. It was all because of this boy, this boy named David, who upturned 
all of the expectations set upon him, and as a result, changed the course of human history. Again and again throughout the Hebrew and Christian scriptures, we're reminded that God favors the underdog, the poor and marginalized, the outcast and captive, the widow and orphan, so much so that in one of the parables, Jesus teaches that the last shall be first and the first shall be last. And that's something for us to pay attention to, if only because it flies in the face of much of what our society tends to lift up and value, to say nothing of the fact that caring for the least among us is, is something Jesus espouses throughout his ministry in all the towns and villages he visits. Now here's the thing, we all have a different and, and varying amounts of, of privilege and exercise this privilege in, in different ways depending on the particular circumstances we find ourselves in. Sometimes more and sometimes less privilege we have. And the corollary is also true that our oppressions because of age or race or gender or education or health or social status or sexual orientation are intersecting with our lives in similar ways. There are times when we're more vulnerable, underdogs as it were, and times when we hold the power in a particular situation. Taking a good look at ourselves, as Anne Murray might sing, and being mindful of where and how we are privileged, for we all have some privilege, helps us to sort out how we can best come alongside our neighbors who might be struggling with a lesser share of power and privilege at any particular moment or place or space. This week, uh, we were invited to give consideration to a couple potent examples in this regard. Thursday was World Refugee Day, and today, as the Anglican Church of Canada, we're marking Refugee Sunday as a witness to the plight of refugees and an opportunity for us to intentionally pray for peace and harmony in our world. And I want to share with you a number this morning. It's a number that comes from the UN High Commissioner for Refugees and was one that was shared earlier this week. 117.3 million. That's how many people have been forcibly displaced from their homes and towns because of war and conflict and persecution in our world. It's a pretty massive number and one that year after year keeps growing. Unfortunately, that number is, or underlying that number, is quite literally countless stories from people like you and me. I know that because I've had the privilege of reading many of them and hearing many of them through my ministry in this area. And whether you're a refugee from Iraq or Afghanistan, whether you're Syrian or Eritrean or Ukrainian, or Burmese or Congolese, it all boils down to a basic hope of living one's life in safety and with enough to flourish without fear or violence or persecution. Well, to our ears, that doesn't seem like too much of an ask. For far too many people on this planet, this is a hope and a dream that remains far, so very far out of reach. I wonder how we might share some of our privilege to help improve the lives of even some of the 117 million people in our world, nearly three times Canada's population who have fled for their lives. Perhaps that looks like supporting a newcomer learning English, making a donation to PWRDF's refugee work, or helping out with a refugee sponsorship. The opportunities are myriad, but the call remains. And Friday was National Indigenous Peoples Day, a day to celebrate Indigenous culture and heritage and a day observed with prayer across our church. There is, of course, so much to celebrate, so much rich and vibrant traditions and spirituality within Indigenous peoples of this land, as I know you all well know. And on the other hand, there's also so much to lament about the continuing inequity that First Nations, Inuit, and Métis continue to face 
especially when viewed through the lens of treaty obligations or the basic standard of living that so many of us enjoy. The 94 calls to action of the Truth and Reconciliation Commission still have a long way to go before being fully implemented. And on an even more basic level, so many communities are simply still struggling for access to safe, clean drinking water, with children asking whether they'll get sick if they drink a cup of water from their tap. We as a parish and a diocese have come alongside the work of truth and reconciliation through learning and prayer and action, but there's always more that we can do in this regard. So I wonder how we might respond by sharing some of our privilege to help improve the lives of Indigenous peoples in Canada whose treaty rights have been broken or ignored time and again. There are, of course, lots of other opportunities to share our privilege too. How are we working for change for those who come to our doors each week to put food on their tables because the support they receive from our society is simply not enough? It's also Pride Month. How are we standing up for God's way of love against intolerance and hatred, coming alongside our LGBTQIA friends and siblings? While most of us will never have a David moment, as it were, all of us can make a difference in the world. Those moments come when we live with love. Those moments come when we summon up the courage to face forward into the storms of our world and in our lives. Those moments come when we choose faith over fear. Be not afraid, Jesus says. Sure, there may be a nasty storm swirling around us and the surf may be getting a bit rough and the wind a bit gusty, but be not afraid. For God is with us, always and everywhere. The gospel reminds us of this and invites us to put our hand in the, one, in the hand of the one who stills the waters and calms the seas, that man from Galilee, Jesus the Christ. In doing so, we're encouraged to risk more and thus gain more for the sake of God's loving purposes, to stand with the underdog, even and perhaps especially when it's not the comfortable thing to do, to speak with truth in love, to radically share of our abundance with those in need, and to summon up the courage to be bold and faithful witnesses of hope and compassion and joy. Our call and vocation to live with love is ever before us. And that can sometimes feel a bit daunting. But here's the thing. God walks with us as we walk with God. And into the storms and tumult of our time and our lives, God speaks a quiet word, reminding us to choose faith over fear. And that when we do, all shall be well, and all shall be well, and all manner of things shall be well. Into the trials and tribulations on the sea of life, all shall be well. And still, we have a role to, be, to play in helping God calm the storms of our time. And to do so, we need to stay awake, as Jesus himself would say, to pay attention and look for opportunities to be allies in the face of injustice and oppression, to be companions for those who are in need of, of care and compassion, to be friends to all our neighbors, wherever their station in life has placed them. Into the storms of our time, Jesus speaks soothing words, peace, be still. And it was so. There was calm, a peace which passed all understanding. And we've inherited that peace today because we have the blessed assurance that God continues to be with us, to walk with us, especially the underdogs of our time. No matter what storms are swirling around us, all shall be well. My prayer this month, in this month of 
justice-seeking observances, whether it's Pride or National Indigenous uh, People's Day or World Refugee Day, is that we as disciples will continue to put our energy into being active participants in God's mission and in God's miracles, supporting the underdogs in our society whenever and wherever we can, and sharing generously of all that we have and all that we are with the world that God loves so very much. May it be so, this day and always. Amen. Would you stand as you're able and join us as we confess our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church, We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Standing, sitting, or kneeling as is your custom, let us offer our prayers to God. In confidence, we offer our Sunday prayers to the Lord, saying, Lord, have mercy. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For peace from on high and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the welfare of the Holy Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For Linda, our primate, Chris, our national indigenous Anglican, and Archbishop Anne, our provincial metropolitan, for Susan, our bishop, and Colin, our assistant bishop, and for Terry, our rector, and Richard, our deacon, and for all the clergy and people, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For Charles, our king, for the leaders of the nations, and for all in authority, let us pray to the Lord. For this city of Welland, for every city and community, and for those who live in them in faith, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For good weather, and for abundant harvests for all to share, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For those who travel by land, water, or air, for the sick and the suffering, especially Aaron and Brian, and any others that you may know at this time. For prisoners and captives, for their safety, health, and salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For our deliverance from all affliction, strife, and need, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the work of peace in all parts of the world and the care and support of refugees forced to flee persecution, violence, and war, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the absolution and remission of all our sins and offenses, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For all who have died in faith, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. In our Anglican cycle of prayer, let us pray for the Right Reverend David Parsons, Bishop, the Right Reverend Joey Royal, 
the Right Reverend Annie Itoshat, the Right Reverend Lucy Netzer, suffragan bish bishops, and the clergy and people of the Diocese of the Arctic. In Niagara, for Burlington Anglican Lutheran Church, Burlington, the Reverend Colin Cameron, rector and pastor, and the people of that parish, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. In our parish community, for Bob and Maureen Watson, Jim and Jan Wellington, Don and Marilyn Whaley, Katie Wheeler and Douglas Rose, David and Paula Whitaker, James and Sarah Whitaker, and all their family members, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For students, teachers, principals, and all who support the education and nurture of children and youth, giving thanks for the leadership of Allison and all who contribute to our Sunday school and the children, youth, and family ministries. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. Remembering St. David and all the saints, we commit ourselves, one another, and our whole life to Christ our, Lord, our God. To thee, O Lord. Almighty God, who has given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplications unto thee, and dost promise that when two or three are gathered together in thy name, thou wilt hear their requests. Fulfill now, O Lord, the desires and petitions of thy servants, as may be most expedient for them, granting us in this world knowledge of thy truth, and in the world to come life everlasting. For thou, Father, art good and loving, and we glorify thee through thy Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, in the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. The flowers on the altar are given to the glory of God in loving memory of Mary Winter, whose birthday was June 19th, by her friends Barb, Lynn, and Gail. Dear friends in Christ, God is steadfast in love and infinite in mercy. He welcomes sinners and invites them to this table. Let us confess our sins confident in God's forgiveness. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the, the glory, glory of your name. name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon you. Pardon and deliver you from all your sins. Confirm and strengthen you in all goodness and keep you in eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Would you stand as you're able? My friends, the peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Let us share a sign of God's peace.
receive all we offer you this day and renew us in his risen life. In the name of Jesus Christ, the Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. We must to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Eternal God, source of all being, we give you thanks and praise for your faithful love. You call us into friendship with you and one another to be your holy people, a sign of your presence in the world. When those we trust betray us, unfailingly you remain with us. When we injure others, you confront us in your love and call us to the paths of righteousness. You stand with the weak and those broken and alone, whom you have always welcomed home, making the first last and the last first. Therefore, we raise our voices with angels and archangels, forever praising you and singing. Blessed are you, O Holy One. When Hagar was driven into the wilderness, you followed her and gave her hope. When Joseph was sold into bondage, you turned malice to your people's good. When you called Israel out of slavery, you brought them through the wilderness and into the promised land. When your people were taken into exile, you wept with them by the river Babylon and carried them home. Restore us, O God, let your face shine. At the right time, you sent your anointed one to stand with the poor, the outcast, and the oppressed. Jesus touched lepers and the sick and healed them. He accepted water from a woman of Samaria and offered her the water of new life. Christ knew the desolation of the cross and opened the way for all humanity into the redemption of your reconciling love. On the night he was betrayed at supper, Jesus with his friends took bread, gave you thanks, broke the bread, gave it to them, and he said, take and eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, Jesus took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant which is shed for you and for many. Do this as oft as you shall drink it in remembrance of me. Loving and Holy One, recalling Christ's death and resurrection, we offer you these gifts, longing for the bread of tomorrow and the wine of the age to come. Therefore, we proclaim our hope. Dying, you destroyed our death. Rising, you restored our life. Lord Jesus, come in glory. Pour out your spirit upon these gifts that through them you may sustain us in our hunger for your peace. We hold before you all those whose lives are marked by suffering, our siblings in Christ. When we are broken and cast aside, embrace us in your love. Restore us, O God, let your face shine. Through Christ and with Christ and in Christ. In the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory are yours, O source of all life, now and forever. Amen. Amen. As our Savior taught us, let us pray.
creator of all, you gave us golden fields of wheat, whose many grains we have gathered and made into this one bread. So may your church be gathered from the ends of the earth and into your kingdom. The gifts of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God.
Together, let us pray. Almighty God, guide and protect your people who share in this sacred mystery and keep us always in your love. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. well with your soul as Jesus speaks to us a word of peace this day and the blessing of God Almighty, Creator, Word, and Holy Spirit be with you this day and always. Amen. To be seated for a few brief announcements. Okay, we have a special announcement from Allison. The Sunday School is hosting coffee hour. If you could come, it'll be really, we'll be happy. <laughs> There's food and drinks for everybody to share. Um, every, um, there's always going to be coffee hour, and everyone is always welcome. Thank you, guys. All right, you guys can go back and set up. We are working on hosting skills today, so uh, everyone is welcome to join us for coffee hour. Um, there's lots of food, because they went shopping. Um, I also just wanted to take a moment. Uh, this week, I got to represent the church um, at the scouting banquet for Ninth Well in Scouting. They presented us with a lovely certificate thanking us for partnering with them uh, and the building. I don't know if you are aware, but this church um, is the official sponsor for Ninth Well in Scouting. Um, so they were just thanking us for our partnership and they uh, also give back to us in so many ways with food drives as well as helping out uh, during the pancake supper. So I just wanted to make a note that they did give us the certificate and we will hang it up somewhere. I'll leave it for Father Terry when he gets back. Okay, the next... TGIFF Family Fun Night is this Friday. There is a carnival and a barbecue planned. For more information, please speak to Allison. Volunteers are needed to help with the weeding of the church beds this Tuesday, day after tomorrow. We start at 8 a.m. Many hands make the job go quickly, so the more people we can get out, the faster we'll get it done, and the faster we'll be home in the cool. We uh, are also looking for anyone willing to help with the watering of the annual plants. It may only involve a couple times for one week per person each month, and it gives you great satisfaction as a gardener to see the flowers grow and bloom. Now is your chance to order a St. David's t-shirt. There are samples to try on in a range of sizes, both children's and adults. Youth and adult shirts up to extra large are $10. Two extra large is $12, and three extra large is $13. Please see Kathy, Rob, or myself to place an order. The deadline is next Sunday, June 30th. The food pantry greatly appreciates any items placed in their bin at the top of the back stairs, and they're particularly looking for applesauce and pudding cups, canned fruit, and pasta and pasta sauce this month. Please check with your bulletin for further details about these announcements. Next Sunday will be our Celebration of Canada Day with guest preacher Canon Jim Powell. We want to thank Father Bill Mouse for leading us in worship these past two Sundays. Are there any special events, anniversaries, graduations, or birthdays being celebrated by anyone this week? 
I know of two birthdays. Come on, own up to it. Rob La, your birthday. I won't embarrass you by asking you how old you're going to be. It's also Ruth Steele's and Darlene Cameron's birthday this week as well. So, happy, happy birthday, birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday and God bless you. We hope you all have a great week, and we look forward to seeing you here again next Sunday. Our closing hymn is 364, Praise to the Lord the Almighty.
Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.